Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, and this is Dr. Barr at drbarrx.com, uh, and today I will be talking about hormones. So if you're missing your 30s where your hormones peaked, this is a talk for you. So as we age, you can see here 30, 40, 50, and beyond, this is how the male figure changes, and it only reflects hormonal changes. And then basically we call this adropause like females go to menopause and men go in adropause and you can see this as a physical change even so obvious with aging start with the belly fat and then the height decrease and you can see like the kyphosis or the changing of the spine and the posture change so what is adropause adropause is something that actually a lot of men do not know much about so one of the things that we talk about when we're asking about adropause are you kind of fatigued or maybe um losing a little bit of sleep maybe not getting the strength that you want in the gym losing the muscle bulk fat around the belly Diminished sex drives happen later. I think most of the men would notice like early erections are gone. This is one thing that we want to put a notice on because really honestly, it is the highest testosterone level that happens in the morning and you know, you produce testosterone throughout the day, but the peak is in the morning. So this is one clue. Then people start noticing that they are um, sleeping less, poor concentration, and really less motivated later on it's a little bit almost depressed don't feel like doing anything this breast getting bigger the abdomen getting bigger shrunken testis and unfortunately also they start feeling like memory loss infertility all these things happen as we call this as adropause and this can start as early um you know 40 possibly is a good number to start checking your hormones i say 39 is the best number of time to just have a baseline. Of course, this is um, a concern, right? And most people say like, oh, I don't have this. But just as a fact, after 30 years, we start, our men start producing 3 to 10% less hormones per year. Not only testosterone, I'm talking about growth hormone, I'm talking about DHEA, pregnenolone, and DHT was the second another hormone that's important for men. So all these hormones start getting less and less. Of course, the thyroid is another important one. So when we test hormones, we check, check all of them. And um, the good news is that we can replenish these hormones back again. It's just like being dehydrated and drinking water. So it's very important to replenish the hormones because it is the soup that all these cells live in and it's very important to keep your cells healthy so this is a little cue for you here because people say like you know what i'm just gonna go to the gym and eat more protein and you can see in this clinical studies doing the squats and the strength here we go going up however it only improves a little bit with with uh exercise but if you do testosterone without exercise you get a bump right like the the second column down there but if there's a placebo with exercise, it goes up a little bit, almost like similar to the testosterone level. But look at that testosterone with exercise, amazing results throughout um, the testing for all patients. So this is a cute here, like little demonstration because people say, oh my God, like I don't think so. I just, I'm doing well on my hormones. I don't need to be tested. But this is hormone levels, the nanogram per deciliter. Um, and you can see the blue is where we're good, close to 30, late 30s, it start turning into more la red. And by 40, we're just maybe halfway where we need to be. So unfortunately, men do not notice a lot of the changes because it's, you can see it's so progressively slow. So the changes are subtle and you would just say, well, I'm getting older, right? Like I'm, I'm sleeping more or just like I can't have more energy as I used to, or I can't get muscle built in a, in a gym as I used to do. And you would just say it's just aging, but guess what? It is hormones and it's something that need to be checked. 40 is the good time to check that, as I said. This is a very important clue. If you're not gonna come and see me and if you're gonna go get your hormones checked anywhere, I really want you to pay attention to this very specific chart. 
So if you look up on the top, there's vitamin D. Vitamin D is very important. Every male and female has to take vitamin D every day. Unfortunately, we cannot make it enough in the sun as we used to do. So we need to take the right dose of vitamin D. I tell people 5,000, but you need to get tested. If you're going to go on a 5,000, um, I use of, um, of uh, vitamin D, you really have to have your blood tests and make sure your levels are good. So I want most of my patients to be above 59, 60, 80 is a good number. It goes up to 100, but like when somebody's in the 40s of vitamin D on their levels, I say not enough, and they're also prone to infection. That's a very important hormone for um, building the immune system. So below vitamin D, up in the corner in red, there's cholesterol. Surprise! All those doctors telling you lower your cholesterol and giving you those horrible chemicals, um, the statins that can cause muscle aches and all that, and say, oh, maybe some few people would be saved and not have a heart attack. You don't need your cholesterol to be too low. Unfortunately, you can most of the time fix it with, with diet, which nobody tells you that. Fix your diet, have enough cholesterol. They're lowering the amount of levels that they would like to have out there because they want everybody to be on a statin, right? It's a huge business. So I tell people, you're fine, maybe up to 200 cholesterol. Just check the other ones, not the total cholesterol. Check all your very low density and the small molecule, the, the very VA, VDLs, like the small and low density lipoproteins. These are the ones you don't want because they will plug your vessels and they're mostly related to nutrition, but your cholesterol could be up to 200 and you're fine, okay? You want your good cholesterol to be high, the HDL as well. Now, here I want you to focus and pay attention because these are all your sex hormones that I want them to be balanced, not just testosterone, y'all. So guys only focus on testosterone, but guess what? We need to measure all these. So if you go to anyone, you need your pregnant alone here on the side, below cholesterol checked, you need your DHEA, you need your progesterone, your androstenedione, you need your DHT checked, you need your testosterone, free, total, bioavailable. And what binds it is called sex binding globulin. You need that also be tested on your blood. And then also you want to check your estradiol. You want to also check your estrone, which is very important. So total estrogen, estrone. The reason I'm saying this Everybody who's taking too much testosterone will end up doing estradiol. This is a chart for guys. So below estradiol, there's even estrone, and that's the one that can cause cancer. I just want to make sure you guys, you don't have that uh, increased. It happens to some people, and then unfortunately, they start not only having the risk of breast cancer. Yes, it can happen in males, but also the prostate cancer, a very high risk. So high-dose testosterone, unfortunately, increases the risk in males for prostate cancer if they're having a high dose. You know what also it causes? It shrinks the testicles, you're shooting blanks, it creates like infertility, unfortunately. So taking too much testosterone is not good. There, I'm gonna discuss in another presentation how testosterone is made through the brain and the signaling because that's important. So this is a chart for people probably past the 40s, right? Like late 40s and so forth. These are the ones that you definitely need to check that. Anybody below 40, 45, I usually like, like to check more hormones than that because we don't give them testosterone, we give a testosterone stimulating hormone. Okay, FSH and LH would be um, stimulated by gonadorelin, which is a peptide that really we love, or some people took HCG, Clomid, and so forth. Different story, different conversation. And then I just want to bring this up because DHT. Everybody hates DHT because they think it's going to kill the hair follicle. DHT is, is, a, is a double sorted kind of hormone in men. It's a strong androgenic male hormone that comes out of testosterone, but also it kills your hair follicles. So too much testosterone will shoot into DHT and kill your hair follicles. That's not good. Also, I'll have to tell you, like there's a way of just, you know, preventing it from going to the hair follicles, that's all. So you apply DHT inhibitor on the hair follicle, you'll not use the, lose the hair and you'll get the benefit of DHT. So this is like some sidekick here. But I like to check estrogen and I'm telling you, estrogen should not be deficient in men. I see a lot of men coming to my practice because they're putting them on estrozole. And estrozole is really hard 
anu or tamoxifen or all these like because they're giving you a very high dose of testosterone you end up making a lot of estrogen and i don't like estrogen deficiency why i'm going to tell you why because it accelerates aging and it's very important for all these functions and you all need these functions so it's important for making sure your cholesterol and bad lipids are in good shape improves your mood energy increased concentration it's important for bone density it's so important for anti-aging it preventative for cardiac it's unbelievable for brain health for focus for calming so there is an estrogen receptor in men so i need men to be on estrogen having enough estrogen and not tanking their estrogen too low but also i don't need too much estrogen to cause the complication we talked about prostate hyperplasia and cancers now i have to mention something the xenoestrogen some of you have heard this or not it's from plastics we're surrounding by so many of these chemicals now it's in the water it's in every um thing that we have around around life right now which is a big thing because it's a estrogen mimicker it's toxic it mimics estrogen and blocks all these receptors holds to it and pretends it's estrogen and stimulate the body they're very concerning so at least we need to check for xenoestrogen and estrones in men dha is one of my favorite hormones it's so important especially in younger men we can raise your testosterone just by dha and pregnant alone as i said in the other chart <clears throat> so dha is a male hormone it's produced by the adrenals not the testicles in a small amount we don't need too much so don't overdo it okay don't overdo it but there are clinical studies that found like dha is great for anti-aging it is very important to go from dha to testosterone that as you saw in the curve it's the step before testosterone dha makes testosterone in men so it's very important and then <clears throat> as we age we lose it so what would it do what is the function of dha decrease cholesterol again which is important right we didn't want to have the statins we want to decrease cholesterol on its own using our own hormones dha decrease the fat deposits and the fatty stuff that we don't want to have also reduce the blood clots increase the bone growth it's bone growth like your bones get stronger weight loss there's less fat in your belly it's very important for your brain uh, function it's important for lean body mass if you want to build up muscle a feel good hormone like testosterone it's a feel good hormone and it makes you feel less stress it's great for your immune system it's an anabolic and repairing hormone and it's a very important one that you do not want to miss so you want to replace it you want to add the amount of dha you need that's the first one you need to give increasing your muscle strength activates your immune system improve your quality of life as a study showed like people who had good levels of dha live five good healthier years years at the end and um, they had metformin res uh, resveratrol and dha in one very longitudinal study they found those men lived healthier extra five years than the control it's very important for the insulin we all heard about insulin resistance it's very good for your fat you know kind of metabolism and then also it's a very important to elevate your growth hormone yes growth hormone also as we age we're going to have a separate speech to talk about it so growth hormone is very important and dha will raise your growth hormone isn't that amazing it's very important to protect your heart so that is very important progesterone is another hormone people think of it oh it's a female hormone but no i need it for men it's very important for cholesterol it's important protecting the heart and guess what also it makes you sleep well it's calming and i usually give a very little dose of progesterone for men because it's just so protective as well and it is a very important hormone that we should not neglect so these are the hormones that we like to balance generally the insulin making sure there's no insulin resistance your oxytocin the love hormone pregnant alone growth hormone testosterone estrogen dha we just do not only do one hormone that's very important so um again if you want to regain your fountain of youth you know what to do get your hormones checked do your hormone balance use bioidentical hormone balance all your hormones that's the hormone soup down on the bottom there estrogen dha hgh testosterone oxytocin you can find us at drbarx.com i hope this was a good easy presentation we're going to have another one on hdh and the benefits of hdh but it's so important to watch 
that when you are checking your test testosterone, going to your doctor, you want to check all these levels, not just one, and testosterone should be te te tested for as free, total, bioavailable, and sex hormone binding globulin. And guess when do you test for it? You test for it early in the morning. That is your highest level in the morning. And if you've been sick or if you've been stressed, I would wait for a week before I test my levels again. So it's very important. And if you're on any bioidentical hormones, let your doctor know when was the, your last dose. So testosterone, DHEA, HDH, pregnenolone, and DHEA, and progesterone, and oxytocin, are my favorite sex hormones to balance to create a very amazing, lovely sexual health. Healthy wishes. You can find us at drbar.com. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe. And if you have any questions, send me questions in and on comments down there. I hope this was useful. Thank you again.